Hi guys, I'm back again today with a continuation to our Sira journey and this is um, 11, second part. Um, yesterday we left off where he was describing the difference of Nabi, Rasul and option one or opinion one was there's no difference, they're synonymous. And let's see, let's continue to the other opinions. So let's get it. Or a Nabi, except that. Allah clearly says, Min Rasulin wala Nabi. And had they been the same thing, then this would be against the eloquence of the Arabic language to praise something like this. Had they been exactly the same, it doesn't make sense to put them together. Umar Rasulin wala Nabi. And there are other evidences that are given. So it doesn't seem to be a very strong opinion that Rasul and Nabi are the same. Another common opinion is that a Nabi is one who is inspired by Allah with a revelation, but he's not told to preach it to the people. Whereas a Rasul is somebody who is told to proclaim it to mankind. So a Nabi has a direct communication, but he doesn't preach. Whereas a Rasul has communication and he preaches. Now this is doubly problematic. This is problematic on multiple levels. Firstly, well, this very ayah that I just quoted, look at the Arabic. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا قَبْلَكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِي أَرْسَلْنَا نَبِي So Nabis are also sent. Nabis are also sent by Allah. Because Allah says, أَرْسَلْنَا قَبْلَكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِي And also our Prophet ﷺ in the hadith in Bukhari said, I saw all of the Prophets on the Day of Judgment. And, and Nabis. And there was a Nabi and he had a huge Ummah. And there was a Nabi and he had a small group. And there was a Nabi and he had five people. And there was a Nabi, he had two people. And there was a Nabi and he had no people following him. What does this show? Nabis are also preaching to the people. And Nabis have Anbiya have followings. Also, it doesn't make sense because the scholars are told that if you conceal knowledge, you're going to be punished. The scholars, in fact, the Muslim is told, So the average Muslim has to preach. How then can somebody be inspired by Allah and he just sits at home and does nothing? This doesn't make sense even logically, right? Even though this is a common opinion, many of you might have heard it. A Nabi is somebody who has wahi, but he doesn't preach. Whereas a Rasul is somebody who has wahi and he preaches. But it doesn't even make sense. La lughatan wa la aqlan wa la shar'an. doesn't make sense. The third opinion is that a Rasul is someone who has been given a new sharia. And a Nabi is someone who follows the sharia of the Rasul before him. A Rasul is someone who has a new code of laws. Whereas a Nabi is somebody who follows the, the Sharia of the Rasul. So the Rasul comes with Sharia X. 50, 100 Nabi come, they all have Sharia X. Then a new Rasul comes with Sharia Y. Then another 20, 50, 100 Nabi comes, they follow Sharia Y. So this is an, a, another opinion. Well, this opinion would seem to be good except for the fact that it doesn't match up to all of the examples. It doesn't match up to the real life scenarios. Who can give me an ex uh, a case where it doesn't seem to fit? The raw data doesn't fit with the hypothesis. <laughs> Who? Uh, well, that, that, that doesn't negate the fact that he is Rasul and Nabi. Musa and Harun, what about him? Musa was the Rasul and Nabi and Harun was Nabi. This was in the Quran. The Quran. Yes. So, so the two, Musa was Rasul and Nabi, and Harun was Muslim. Was Harun only a Nabi or also a Rasul? Uh, this is something that scholars have, we mentioned this a few weeks ago in Ramadan, we were talking about this. Scholars have, some scholars have said that Harun was only a Nabi, and some have said that uh, he was a Rasul and a Nabi because of the other verse that we mentioned. Uh, what is it? Arsil Ma'iya, not Arsil Ma'iya, Israel. The other, I'm not, it's not coming to me now, but the word Arsil is mentioned. 
right? Arsalna ma'hu akhahu Haruna, arsalna ma'hu. Um, but there is an ikhtilaf. But, okay, this would in fact support the data. This would support the data. How about another example that doesn't support the data? Shu'aib and Salih. Yeah. Yusuf and his brothers. What about Yusuf? Yusuf is not a By this definition, he's not a Rasul. By this definition, he wouldn't be a Rasul. But was he a Rasul? Yusuf was a Rasul. What's your evidence for this? No, he's not a Rasul. <laughs> What's your evidence that Yusuf is a Rasul? He has a chapter named after him. <laughs> Maryam has a chapter named after her and she's not a prophetess. Question, were there women prophetesses? Very easy for you to deny. Our sisters might disagree. Our sisters, what do you say? Oh, mashallah, these are... <laughs> I can assure you in many other gatherings I go to, uh, the sisters want there to be prophetesses, prophets of the female species, gender, excuse me, <coughs> not species. And um, they quote evidences. They quote evidences. We're going to a tangent from a tangent, but this is interesting. They quote evidences. Of their evidences is... Of their evidences is... Jibreel alayhi salam come to Maryam. And Allah says, Wa And of their evidences is for Im Ummi Musa. Because Allah uses the word Wahi for Im Ummi Musa. Right? And of their evidences is, Allah says in the Quran to Maryam, that Stafaituka, uh, uh, that Ala uh, Nisa'il uh, Alameen. Right? That I have chosen you above every single other. Lady, and so if Allah has chosen her to that level, then she's got to be not just a regular person but a Nabi. And in fact, and in fact, a number of scholars of the Islamic tradition did argue that there were female prophetesses. Of them is Abu Hassan al Ash'ari, of them is Al Qurtubi, of them is Ibn Hazm al Andalusi. These people all believed that Allah sends men and women prophets. So for those who want to preach this, they have some precedence. They're not coming out of the blue. Okay? Now, if somebody were to quote them an ayah in the Quran, which restricts prophethood to the male... What? What is the verse? What is the verse? Illa <laughs> rijalan something. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. The word Rijal has got to be mentioned somewhere. Yes. <laughs> You're right, but what's the verse? You just quoted the one word, the man. <laughs> yes. What does that got to do with the prophethood? Right? Right? Allah mentions two conditions for prophethood. For every person that we sent before you was a man from the people of the town, from the people of the cities. Allah never sent Bedouin prophets. Allah sent prophets of cultivations, of cities. Right Now, you quote this to Abu Hazm al-Ash'ari, to Ibn Hazm. They will say, yes, we agree. Arsalna Rasul. And we are saying Maryam is a Nabi. Okay, so the ayah says we agree with it. Any other ayah comes to mind? You see, this is an interesting discussion here now. And it's very relevant to our times when a lot of debates are happening about... <laughs> so they quote the... So, of course, the number one example for a female prophetess is who? Maryam, correct? Right? So let us concentrate. I'm going into the tangent of a tangent, by the way, but I think everybody's interested in this so we can afford the luxury here. And inshallah, we have plenty of time to, to have this here, inshallah. So a number of interesting points here. If Maryam is the, the example that they choose, let us see how Allah describes Maryam in the Quran. It is agreed that the angel showed himself to Maryam, correct? Does an angel showing yourself to a human make the human a prophet? What's your evidence? 
The Sahaba. Exactly, right? Seeing an angel does not make you a prophet, or else Umar ibn Khattab would be a prophet. Aisha would be a prophet. Everybody would be a prophet, right? Seeing the angel Jibreel does not make you a prophet. And we already mentioned the types of wahi. And one of them, we said ilham, which happens yeah. when the angel's coming. That's not necessarily the wahi of the prophets, right? I mean, do you have another example where an angel has come to another human being in the absence of a prophet? In the absence of a prophet? When you talk of the Sahaba, the prophet himself was when the Yes, there are plenty of ahadith that. Uh, an angel uh, came to one of the people to test him, the, the bald man and the man who did the... There are plenty of traditions. The angel coming and talking to the people directly. Uh, there's an, even a uh, hadith in Bukhari that says a man was visiting his brother for the sake of Allah and he met an angel in the, in the guise of a man. And the angel spoke to him. Why are you going? What are you doing? What's your purpose? You're only doing this for Allah. Then I am the angel that Allah has sent to you to tell you that Allah loves you because you're visiting your brother. Right? So... Clearly, there are angels that visit humans, right? And this is not restricted, by the way, to the prophets. Even it could happen right now, you never know. There's no closure to this chapter. Right, you have something to add? Somebody has? Angel Jibreel is to somebody without prophets. We don't know of Angel Jibreel coming to somebody in the previous generations. We don't know. But we know for a fact he came to people like... of this ummah. And people saw him and spoke with him, right? Therefore, it's, uh, this is the first point. The second point, Allah mentions in Surah Al Imran uh, about Maryam and uh, Maryam and uh, Isa alayhim salam. What does Allah say? Hafizab, you need to help me out here. Um, the phrase is "Wa ummuhu Siddiqa kana yaqulan al-ta'am." Right? Uh, what is the phrase before it? This is the, the, the strength of Hifd when you can say what's before it. After it, I can do it, right? <laughs> what's before that? Before this, Allah mentions that uh, Isa is just like a Rasul. Right? Prophets have, Rusul have come before him. And as for his mother, his mother was a Siddiqa. Notice. Isa was a Rusul of the Rusul. And his mother was a Siddiqa. Clearly, Allah is mentioning their levels. And we know that of the levels, that أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ Right? These are the four levels. Nabiyin, Siddiqin, Shuhada, Salihin. So when Allah mentions Isa, He is of the Nabiyin and the Rusul. And then He mentions Maryam and He says, Wa ummuhu Siddiqa. So clearly, therefore, putting all the evidences together, the majority opinion has always been that the Prophets of Allah have only been men. There is a minority opinion, and this is an opinion that does exist. Let us now get back. We're talking about these differences. Rasul and Nabi. And so we said a Rasul has the new Sharia, and Nabi has the same Sharia, right? I'm asking you, does this fit up with our raw data? And we were talking about this, about was Yusuf a Rasul or a Nabi? So let's get back over here. Was he a Rasul or a Nabi? Come on guys, we gave a whole tafsir of Surah Yusuf. 16 halaqats. I think Yusuf was a Rasul. You all fail. You all fail. <laughs> Quote me an ayah of the Quran. Yusuf is Ulul Azm? La, 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 Yusuf is not. Then he's a Nabi? You have something to add? He's a Rasul because. I think that's the season also. Why is he <laughs> First, you want only the prophets to be men only. Now, when you fail in answering the question, you say, Go ask the sisters. This is a contradiction in manhood. Uh, Yusuf did not have a risala when he came. But what is a risala? You're going, this is circular. This is, well, that's your definition of a rasul. This is a circular definition. You see the problem here. We're trying to define risala and nubuwa. And then, based on that definition, you are classifying prophets, but what's the evidence? You, you see the problem here, right? It's a circular definition. 
Yusuf appears to have been a Rasul. That's not the ayah that I'm thinking of. Hatta idha halaka qultum lan yab'atha Allah min ba'dihi rasula wa laqad ja'akum Yusuf min qablu bil bayyinati sura ghafir fama ziltum fi shakk mimma ja'akum bih hatta idha halaka qultum lan yab'atha Allah min ba'dihi rasula wa laqad ja'akum Yusuf rasula This is in the Quran sura ghafir fourth page on the top first eye on the right hand side Clearly Yusuf is mentioned as a Rasul, right? Therefore, oh. this throws one spanner. Is there any other example? Come on, there's such an obvious example. Well, sisters, let's see. see such an obvious example that doesn't fit up with the raw data. Then the raw data doesn't fit up with this definition. Sisters. Adam. Adam. Okay, mashallah, you reclaimed some of your. <laughs> Adam. If a Nabi is someone who follows the Sharia ah of the previous prophets, was Adam a Rasul or a Nabi? Rasul. Haha, so now we get into the According whole issue then. What's your evidence he's a Rasul? You just said it. Because there's no one else before him. There was no one else before him. If there's no Sharia before Adam, according to this definition, how can he be a Nabi? So you guys seeing, and, and you know, honestly, I, I ask this to some of the advanced students when I teach in Al Maghrib, and I do this uh, on purpose to demonstrate something, and that is. SubhanAllah, these simple questions, we just gloss over them from Sunday school and we never think about them, right? Mm -hmm. Such a simple question, what is a Nabi and what is a Rasul? And Wallahi, we think we know so much. And then now when we get confronted with raw data, with Quran, this and that, even this begins to crumble and we realize how little we know, right? And that's why the scholars say, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Yeah, the more you know, the more you realize like you don't know. Adam. Uh, for correcting our information. Alhamdulillah. So far, I've been thinking all this time that uh, Yusuf was a Nabi. Uh, Yusuf was a Rasul. And Adam was a Nabi and not a Rasul. Oh. Hadith in, uh, hadith in uh, Muslim Imam Ahmad that Abu Dhar asked the Prophet uh, that, Ya Rasulullah, a Nabiyan kana Adam, was Adam a Nabi? And the Prophet said, Naam, mukallama. Yes, Allah spoke to him. In Jannah, Allah spoke to him. Na'am mukallama. And Allah spoke to Adam. Wa ya Adam muskun anta wa zawjukal Jannah. Right? And in the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet ﷺ said, Awwalu rasoolin ursila ila al-ard, Nuh alayhi salam. Awwalu rasoolin. The first rasool is Nuh. So this is really, this is raw data now. Oh. The first rasool is Nuh. Adam is a Nabi. Right? And therefore, this doesn't add up now. That if the first Sharia is in this, it doesn't add up. And then, of course, there are other examples. I'll just tell you, you're getting uh, already confused. Dawood and Sulaiman. How come the Greece was uh, has a Sharia? No, the Greece is a Nabi. Well, who's the, who's the one who said, I'm not the one saying that? That's the point. You're defining it and then you're making it circular back. It's you see very what I'm saying? Confusing. No, I said this is the third opinion. Yeah, this is the third opinion. <laughs> it's getting it too hot. People it's are correct. getting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. And for it reads again in Surah Al-Ayyam, it is was through the Kilabi. Inna kana siddiqan nabiyya wa rafana wa makana. Yes, Idris was a Nabi, not a Rasul. Idris was a Nabi, and Idris was before Nuh. Idris was before Nuh, and Idris was a Nabi. He was not a Rasul. So this does not, that's what I'm saying, this third opinion does not make sense. Mm. Right? So that's why and we then have opinions. The two other examples are, and what did I just say? Dawood and Sulaiman. They were Rusul, even though the Sharia they followed was the Sharia of Musa. They were Rusul. And they had books given to them. Dawuda Zabura. But the Sharia they followed was the same. There was no change. The Zabur, even to this day, the Psalms of David, it's nothing but praise, singing, the tasbih and tahmid. There is no law at all in the Zabur. 
Because the Zabur was not meant to be Allah. And therefore, a Rasul can even get a book. But that doesn't mean that uh, it's going to have a new law. Right? And so all of this doesn't fit up with the raw data. The raw data doesn't match up with the hypotheses, so we have to go back to the drawing board, right? Instead of going on and on, there are other three or four opinions I'm not going to... But I just wanted to illustrate this point that, subhanAllah, we need to learn our religion. We need to study. And um, personally, I find this the most fascinating subject is theology, aqidah. That's why I love to specialize in this. Uh, moving on now. So the, the correct opinion, inshallah. We'll give you the correct opinion. <laughs> you wanted the way correct opinion, okay. Uh, the correct opinion... Uh, seems to be the one that Ibn Taymiyyah uh, propounded. And of course, you know I'm a big fan of Ibn Taymiyyah. He's my mentor and my person I consider one of the greatest scholars of Islam. And you can see why. That when he discusses, he discusses with precision, with accuracy, with academic detail. Ibn Taymiyyah says, let's look at the linguistic meaning of Nabi and Rasul. Nabi comes from Naba'a. And Naba'a means information. Amma yitasa'aloon anin. Naba il Azim. And so a Nabi is somebody who informs you what Allah wants you him to inform. So a Nabi has information from Allah. So a Nabi has to preach and a Nabi has to teach. By the word Nabi, Yunbi'u, he gives information Anillah. Right? So the word Nabi automatically implies he's speaking to you a message from Allah. Okay? A Rasul comes from which means to send an emissary, a delegate, a representative, an ambassador. So a Rasul is somebody whom Allah sends. And you send a person, a Rasul, to a nation that generally you are not on friendly terms with. And so a Rasul is sent to a nation that does person. not believe in him. Whereas a Nabi teaches to a people that already accepts him. Oh. And if you look at this definition, all the raw data fits into place. All of it. Did any of Adam's children reje reject him? No. Did any of Idris's people reject him? No. Aha, let's get to Nuh. <coughs> what happens? <coughs> people rejected him. People rejected him, and he was sent to them. He was the Rasul Ursila ila ahl al-Ard, right? Yusuf, now he becomes a Rasul and not a Nabi, because he's sent to the people of Egypt, right? Dawood and Sulaiman, they are sent to larger groups, and they are fighting, they established a kingdom. One of the very few prophets who established a kingdom on earth, right? Only the ones that we know, Dawood and Sulaiman and our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that we know, they established a kingdom on earth and a power on earth. And so they are Rasul. And look at the Anbiya. And the classic example is Isa and Yahya. Two cousins. Their mothers were sisters. Right? The one is a Rasul, the other is a Nabi. Why? What's the difference? They accepted Yahya, they rejected Isa. They accepted Yahya, they rejected Isa. So this definition seems to be precise. And then Ibn Taymiyyah says, generally, every Rasul does have a new Sharia, but this is not a rule. It's just a symptom which has exceptions. <laughs> it's an adjective. It's a description which is generally true. But it's not the rule. And there are exceptions. So every Rasul does not necessarily have a new Sharia, but generally, every Rasul did have a new Sharia. And uh, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari asked the Prophet sallallahu hadith is Muslim Ahmad. Abu Dhar al-Ghifari asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how many messengers did Allah send? How many Rasul? And the Prophet sallallahu said, 310 and something. And this number is something that seems to have some type of power to it because that is the exact number of Badr, right? And it is also the exact number of of 310 and something. Huh? Well, of course, Rasul, yes. And it is also the exact number of the people of Talut who crossed over the river. When David and Goliath had the fight, and Talut took his army. Right? The people who crossed over after that were around 310 and something. So this number 
some seems to be recurring in a number of times. So the Prophet said, how many Rasul? The Prophet said, 310 and something, a large quantity. Meaning don't trivialize, just because it's 310, don't think it's trivial. Their quality, their quantity is large, 310 and something. So he asked him, and how many Prophets were there? And so he said, 124,000. 124,000. This hadith is in Muslim Imam Ahmad and it is inshallah ta'ala hasan, authentic. And this is another indication that Rasul and Nabi are not the same. And from this we derive every Rasul is a Nabi but not every Nabi is a Rasul. Risala is higher. Risala is higher than Nabi. And every Nabi is a, every Rasul is a Nabi. Not every Nabi is a Rasul. And out of the Rasul there are the Ulul Azm who are five. Out of the Rasul there are the elites of them. Ulul Azmi min al-Rusul. And these are, of course, the greatest ones that humanity has ever seen. And these are Nuh and Ibrahim and Musa and Isa and our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And uh, one more point, Allah, before we move on. And that is that. Okay, so we're going to end here and then we'll continue or we'll finish tomorrow. Um... That was a really a great discussion there in the middle uh, when everybody was just like, you know, um, putting their two cents into the topic of the Nabi and Rasul, who they thought they were, who were and weren't a Nabi nor a Rasul. It was a very interesting one and obviously some of the Nabis or Rasuls, I don't know much about i don't even think i've heard names the names before but i don't know their story so that would be also a aspect to read up on because i don't know much well thank you guys and i'll see you guys tomorrow bye